Peter Hitchens, it's a pleasure to be interviewing you outside. Let's just hope it doesn't rain. Let's hope. Please would you count us down? Five, four, three, two, one. And slightly ahead of schedule, you wrote recently that politicians are bland careerists with neither passions nor beliefs. Do you stand by that? Completely. Is that constructive? It's not meant to be constructive. It's meant to be destructive of something which is wrong. But do you then say that all politicians in this country don't have beliefs and don't have passions? No, I guess there are some who do, but generally they're the ones who are excluded from any kinds of positions of power or influence. Is there a danger when you're writing a column and trying to keep it concise that you oversimplify? Well, the purpose of journalism has been stated, I think, by a former editor of The Economist as at first exaggerate, then simplify. And I think there is always an element of that in, in what you do. It, it certainly isn't my intention to make things seem more complicated than they already are. But some things are quite simple. Where do you put the biggest premium? On the craftsmanship of writing or on your views? Well, I think the biggest premium has to be on the truth. And do you believe, and this isn't meant to be an impertinent question, but do you believe in absolutely everything you ever put down on paper? There wouldn't be any point in putting it down on paper if I didn't. Do you feel that you've in some ways hardened your views just by dint of having to write a column every week? I've got better at arguing from having lots of arguments. Where, do, where did you learn to argue? Oh, I came, out of, uh, I came out of the womb arguing, but I've got better at it ever since. How long does it take you to write a column? A week. A whole week? Yes. There's an awful lot of thinking and consideration and rejection and discovery and long walks to work out which way the thing will work and how to put it. And do you finally commit your thoughts to paper or to the computer at the last moment right up against the deadline or how does it work? I leave it as late as I possibly can. How did you get into journalism in the first place? Um, I started out on the, on the Socialist Worker with the, the weekly newspaper of the International Socialists, a Trotskyist organisation. So you... I wasn't, wasn't very good. I think it's fair to say have gone on a political journey or certainly changed your mind politically because you started out on the left and now would you say you're on the right? Well, people can say what they like. I, I, I would call myself a Burkean conservative and you can call that right or, or whatever. I don't really care. It's not a journey. I've changed my mind. What always astonishes me is that people should find that so remarkable. My minds are for changing. If the facts change, I change my mind. What do you do? Describe very, very briefly what a Burkean conservative is. Someone who believes fundamentally that, uh, that liberty depends on conscience, that if people behave themselves, they don't have to be oppressed by law or government, who believes that government itself should be kept as limited as possible. And ultimately, I think that, that humans are under God rather than under their own desires and devices. And are governed and directed by that far more than by, by, by force or by law. Do you think it's possible to have a viable moral code without God? No. Explain to me why you think that. Well, anybody can, uh, c can have a moral code, but unless it originates from some power and source that you can't control, then you'll fiddle with it to suit yourself. But can't we fiddle with a moral code deriving from a divinity anyway? You can, but you'll be caught out doing it, and you'll know you're doing it at the time. You've written about the moral decline of this country in the last few decades. Why is it declining, and in your view, are we still declining? Oh, well, I think decline has been going on for a very, very long time, and we are declining because we cease to be a Christian people. And that really became most obvious during and after the First World War. I mean, everything, all the catastrophes that have happened to this country really follow from the decision to go to war in 1914. How big a part of your personal life does religion play? Well, it's in everything because it has to be. I mean, the world was made by God. We live and move and have our being in God. And it, it, every, every time you think seriously about anything, any action or any experience, then if that's what you believe in, then you come up very rapidly against that fact. You haven't always believed in that, no. have you? So was there a road to Damascus conversion for you? No, it was, it, was, it was a reasoned discovery that the world didn't make sense without it and couldn't be made to make sense and that, for instance, justice is impossible without it. And I value justice very highly. So you base your religious beliefs not on belief and a leap of faith, as it were, but actually on reason. Well, reason takes you, to, takes you only to a certain point, and at that point you have to decide. And what you're deciding when you decide between God and not God is what kind of universe you wish to live in.
What makes you proud to be British? Uh, nothing makes me proud to be British. I am proud to some extent of my country because of its tradition of liberty and limited government and the freedom of speech and the rule of law. That Peter Hitchens is all over. I'm going to ask you one bonus question. Do you think it's fair to say that you are angry in your columns quite a lot? And if you are angry, are you being angry on behalf of others or on behalf of yourself? No, I'm not angry. I, 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 calling someone angry is a way of dismissing them, of, of claiming that their, their actions and their arguments are based on some kind of emotional spasm. I'm distressed and grieved by many of the things that have happened and are happening in my country. Polemical? It's different from anger. Polemical? Well, polemical, of course, yes, why not? Very good to see you.